Well, good morning and welcome to the Fellowship of the Book. This morning I want to try and talk to you about Scottish revolutions. Scotland needs a revolution. England needs a revolution. Wales needs a revolution. The Western Church needs a revolution. So I want to speak to you about Scottish revolutions. We're in Second Chronicles, chapters 29, 30 and 31. Please take some time to read them. And our highlight verse for this morning is Second Chronicles 31, verse 20 and 21, which reads as follows. Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and true before the Lord his God. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the law and in the commandment, to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. He did it with all of his heart. So he prospered. That was the conclusion. So he prospered. Some observations then. The well-planned and quite literal sweeping reforms and revolution of King Hezekiah did great good for the nation. It is of note, however, that many laughed and mocked at the promise of restoration that such a revolution and repentance and reforms would bring to the nation. Even so, Hezekiah's revolution, his reforms and the generous way he implemented them did bring happiness and joy to many people. And with that joy, they became the happy, exuberant iconoclasts of all corrupting idolatry and heresy. There was a revolutionary reform going on, you see, and we read this in Second Chronicles 31, verse 1. When all this was finished, all Israel who were present went out to the cities of Judah and broke the sacred pillars in pieces, cut down the wooden images, and they threw down the high places and the altars from all Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh, until they had utterly destroyed them all. Now, am I advocating the destruction of property as happened in Perth after John Knox preached? No, I am not. But I am advocating the pulling down of everything that is unchristlike within the church. I am advocating the toppling of pillars which are contrary to the obvious New Testament practice and preaching, especially of the apostles. Listen now, we need a revolution in the church. A call to action then. When joy and happiness, when with joy and happiness rather, the past is repented of, and with further, the present is cleansed out of the ashes of that foul smelling bonfire. Blessed prosperity shall be experienced by the church and thus by the nation. It has happened in the past. However, I wonder, is there any stomach for this in the present? Scotland, John Knox is buried under a parking lot. How embarrassing and indicative is that?